So today I'm off to the Workplace Relations Commission in Dublin. Where's the camera? I think it's down the left hand side. I'm off to the Workplace Relations Commission in Dublin for a mediation meeting. So sometimes the WRC offer mediation in disputes and complaints that have gone in and sometimes they deem a particular case or cases suitable for mediation. So my client is uh, was agreeable to the mediation, so that's where I'm going today. It's uh, eight o'clock there now, I'm kind of waiting around, hanging around uh, until half eight, and then I'll head off to Dublin. I was at the WRC yesterday as well for mediation, coincidentally, and the one yesterday settled. They don't often settle, quite frankly, and off, often they are a waste of time. But the one that I had yesterday was a case where my client, the employee, probably would not have been uh, comfortable, would not have been comfortable at all at uh, adjudication hearing because she was uh, very, very nervous for the mediation. So that coloured the judgment uh, from both of us, quite frankly, as to what she was prepared to settle for or not. So even though her case might have been worth a few more bob, the cost, the mental cost or the toll taken on her to go through an adjudication process, that formal process, more formal process than a mediation, to be a, have to give evidence on oath, to be open to cross-examination and being questioned and so on by the opposition, and perhaps being questioned by a barrister who would be well-trained and well-experienced in questioning and cross-examining and so on. That type of thing would be something that this lady, this girl, would not have been comfortable with at all. So that had to be factored in to the equation. So yesterday's mediation settled. Today's, I doubt very much it will. Today, yesterday I was for the employee and today I'm for the employer. So that is the nature of the business that I'm in. Some days you're with the employee, some days you're with the employer. You're just a hired gun, quite frankly. You put forward the best argument you can uh, on behalf of your client, and that's really it. And some fools, assholes, quite frankly, uh, online will suggest or make comments on TikTok or wherever that, oh, you're only for the employer, or do you not like employees, or bullshit like that, uh, when they don't actually understand that a professional solicitor or lawyer will represent their client as best they can and that client may well be a sexual deviant, they may well be a criminal, they may well be an employer, they may well be an employee, it doesn't make any difference. A solicitor or a barrister is supposed to do the best they can for their client and it's simply a professional job. It's like pulling teeth or anything else. So there you go, I'm off to WRC as I say and I'm kind of waiting around just for a few minutes wait till the post comes in and then I'll be off to Dublin and uh, head out to Ballsbridge then for this mediation. And uh, as I say, today I'm with the employer and yesterday I was with the employee. I'll turn on the heat now for the ladies before they come in. Nine o'clock, they'll be in at nine o'clock. We'll have the heat on then and the place will be warm enough for them. I'm in at six o'clock, so I don't have the heat on in the outer office where they are from that time. I have a heater in my own room there, so it's good enough. Well, there's my own pencil or my own first shop I ever bought. Just there. Painting. Paint. That's it there, actually. Corey's Mini Market, 6 Prospect Road. Plus 11. Anyway, just waiting for the postman to come. He hasn't come yet now, so I might just have to leave the front door open for him. I can't be hanging around, i got to go on, so 
That's what we want to do. Heating is on there now for the ladies. They'll be grand when they come in at nine o'clock. Man done anyway. I got the post there and left it in the office. So it's one job by the way. Now off to Dublin, and I am going to listen to my audio book. A cuckoo's calling. It's a good old yarn. It's a good old yarn. It's written by Galbraith. Uh, I don't know what. Uh, Robert Galbraith, but that's actually a pen name for J.K. Rowling. And uh, it's very good. It's a good yarn. It's a sort of a detective series. Cormor and Strike is the detective, and uh, it's good. It's a very good yarn, actually. Very good storyteller, J.K. Rowling. I haven't actually read any of the Harry Potter books because it's not really my thing. I don't think, although. Maybe it would be, maybe I would enjoy them, but she's a superb storyteller and she writes under the name of, I think it's Robert Galbraith for this series. So that's what I'm going to listen to now on my way to Dublin and on my way home. So, puts in the time and uh, I can pick up on the news later on. traffic this morning now was terrible compared to yesterday morning. Yesterday morning wasn't too bad. Jesus, it's uh, bad this morning. There's the CCJ there on the left hand side. That's the Courts of Criminal Justice. I've just got a call there now, a phone call from the office. From my office to say that the WRC is after ringing. The mediator has rung and she has told us that the complainant can't make it. In other words, the person who brought the complaint can make the bloody mediation. It's half past nine now. I've just pulled into the Smithfield car park. Half past nine. The mediation is at half past ten. I was going to walk over there as after bursting through traffic and uh, had the frustration. Left the office at half eight and now at the last minute, complaining can't make it. It's a bit of a joke, quite frankly. Um, I would have to see whether we're going to be agreeable to mediation at all or not, because I'll have to discuss this with my client. I'm sure he has left his, uh, his home or his business premises to be up here today as well, in good time for the mediation. So it's just such a waste of time, and it's, uh, it's ridiculous, you know. Anyway, we'll see what we're going to do. I have to head back home now. I have to pay my parking ticket first even though I'm only off to drive into the bloody car park. That's very frustrating now. I'm heading back down the Keys and I'm only after going up the Keys, the far side there, heading back down the Keys, heading home, back to the office. But unfortunately, I've lost significantly financially today because I had no consultations booked in today because of the mediation. When you go to the likes of a mediation or indeed a WRC hearing, you simply don't know how long it's going to go on for. And you really have to make provision for or allow for it going on for a good while, especially if there's a good chance of negotiating a solution. And if it's a hearing, well then obviously it can go on for an unknown, undeterminate amount of time, depending on the number of witnesses and how the hearing is conducted and so on. So bottom line is, if I'm going to WRC or to for a hearing or for mediation, I really can't book any consultations in, in the office. And that means that obviously there's a lot of income there. Obviously I charge for each consultation and I do three or four days. So uh, I'm losing out on that income and obviously my time is uh, valuable enough and uh, that's how I make a living. I sell expertise and time in chunks. And 
no time has been charged today, unfortunately. And there's a limit to what I can charge my client for this. Obviously, I have to charge him for my time out of the office and so on. But it's frustrating and, and lousy on him as well, quite frankly. So we're going to have to talk about what we'll do going forward. The WRC are going to come back with a new date for the mediation, but I don't think it's good enough, quite frankly. I'm in the office in Smithfield at half past nine. The mediation is at half past ten, and we're ready to go. The client is going to be there as well, and it's not good enough to get a call like that and say, oh, the complainant can't make it. It's simply not good enough, so we're going to have to consider whether we're going to agree to mediation at all or not, quite frankly, at this stage, and refuse uh, or decline any new date that they're going to give us because it's simply not good enough. It's bullshit, amateur hour stuff. Uh, I know it's not the WRC's fault, but I mean, they should really, uh, there should be some penalty for the complainant who's wasted everybody's bloody time. So, We'll see what happens, but I think I'll be advising my client to forget about the mediation. And if this guy wants to get serious, let him uh, bring his claim to the WRC and let's just uh, have it out there and let the adjudicator decide it. And if he doesn't show up that day, well, then obviously we'll be looking for the complaint to be struck out on the basis that he's failed to show. Bring the sauce. Thanks. Nice, Justin. Thank you. Thank you. Stuff. Consolation prize for a waste of my, my warning in Dublin. Nut job. The nut job is my consolation prize from. Uh, Make up for a morning. Okay, I'm just looking through my emails there and I'm seeing what I have today. First one is employment law situation, reviewing your staff handbook and contract of employment. It's a big mistake being made in it and I'll let them know what it is. The second one has to do with family law, bitter dispute. My client has, I believe, unreasonable expectations, but it's difficult to temper her or calm her down. She's wasting her, she's wasting energy and time and um, not making things easy for herself or her, her husband or partner. I can't remember which he is, or the child. Then we have the do 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 conveyancing client inquiring about the process and what stage we're at. Then I have um, yeah, it's just transfer. It's just a sort of a, a transfer of an interest in a property from one family member to another and a refinance. Then I have an employment law allegation of bullying, which uh, if a consultation then tomorrow or the next day about that with that gentleman so he's alleging bullying it's obvious that there's not bullying at all it's something completely different but we have this all the time especially when it comes to the employment and especially when it comes to bullying most people have to bull is what bullying actually means then we have um, yeah, the South African clients are buying a property here, they're transferring money and it's coming in in tranches. The last tranche is due in this week now, so once that comes in, that sale will complete. That's one of those fixer-upper, derelict or vacant cottages in the west of Ireland where they're buying it for around 100 grand or thereabouts and going to fix it up and apply for the vacant property grant and so on. And then I have another one, it's a um, client selling a property by what they are talking about, binding bid, a binding bid scenario, I'm not even sure what it means, but there's problems with the title there, so whether the bid is going to be binding now or not, I don't know, she has more 
uh, more of an obligation to sort out her title and her planning, to be honest about it. Yeah, that's the story. And then I have uh, the post, which we see over here. There's the post there. I'd love to be sorted out as well. reading an article there online and I'll probably make a video about it myself it's to do with a woman having uh, she's been ordered by the High Court to remove walls, gates and foundations erected without planning permission this lady, Margaret Murphy I think her name was and her daughter let me see now Margaret Murphy Senior is 75 her daughter Margaret Murphy Junior they uh, began construction they basically involved, were engaging in unauthorised development and the development was carried out according to Mr Justice Richard Humphreys development was carried out on a county cork site in complete disregard of planning legislation so I'll probably make a video about this she's been ordered or they've been ordered to take it down and move it and actually restore the site to its previous condition they were looking for various reliefs uh, time to uh, get legal advice and this that and the other the judge basically was having none of it he said that she had plenty of time to get uh, legal advice prior to this, that there were plenty of temporary orders that he made and which essentially were ignored. And the two uh, ladies um, appear to have engaged in some development. Uh, development was carried out on the site in, quote, complete disregard of planning legislation. And he said that the best thing, uh, possible thing that the mother and daughter could now do was to comply. So he gra granted final orders uh, to the Cork County Council. His orders restrained the women uh, and anyone else with notice of the order from in constructing a boundary wall or dumping hardcore or concrete on the fields. And he gave Miss Murphy Senior, that's uh, four weeks to restore the site to its prior condition. So that's an interesting enough story. Um, a lot of people get very, very exercised in this country about planning permission and about the need for planning permission, which I find strange, to be honest with you. Um, I have no problem with the planning laws and I recognise the need for good planning. I know that we don't have perfect planning or anything of that nature, but we do need to safeguard our environment and safeguard our physical infrastructure and so on. And I don't want to see uh, planning uh, developments going. I don't want to see developments going ahead willy-nilly all over the country just because somebody has some tenuous connection with somewhere uh, they think that they're entitled to build on their land um, that's in my view I don't agree with that um, because if that was the case I could be building a casino at home uh, in the field next door if I bought it or whatever so I don't believe in it. Anyway that is the story there i'll make a video about that it's an interesting one and i get a lot of my uh, material for videos in um, online newspapers essentially so I, I pay a subscription and i will use i will use the crime and law section of whatever newspaper i'm reading to give me ideas for for videos and obviously the case going on there at the moment about uh, John Waters and Kitty Holland and Kitty Holland suing John Waters for defamation and the whole question of according to John L Waters a lie being put on foot as it were in the Savita Halapanavar case 
uh, the report in the Irish Times initiated this lie according to John Waters. His view and his position and his evidence seems to be that. He's not accusing necessarily, he says, Kitty Holland of being a liar or lying, and he didn't set out to defame her or anything, but essentially the report was reported in a way that it commenced or initiated a lie. That seems to be his defence. The outcome of that case, a defamation case, brought by Kitty Holland against John Waters, will be an interesting one. So he's been sued by journalist Kitty Holland over remarks that he made at a political event in 2017, which Kitty Holland says meant she was not fit to be a journalist. So that's the basis of the defamation there. The outcome of that will be interesting. I see men charged with flying drones near Dublin airport challenge draconian law, what they describe as draconian law. Legal counsel for the two applicants say, says that the 1975 law under which they are charged is designed to deal with offences such as aircraft hijackings. And the two men apparently were involved in allegedly flying their drones too close to Dublin airport. They have launched high court challenges against the constitutionality of the act under which they are charged. They, are claim, they claim that if they're, if they're found guilty of the offences under the 1975 Air Navigation and Transport Act, they cannot get a suspended sentence from the courts. In other words, well, we'll see. Uh, Section 6 of the Act expressly prohibits any suspension of any sentence they might receive or the application of the Probation Act they claim. So that could be draconian enough because a lot of courts will rely on the Probation Act to give a first offender, certainly, the benefit of the doubt or cut them a bit of slack and give them the Probation Act as opposed to marking a conviction. In this case, they're saying the legislation, the 1975 Act, the Air Navigation and Transport Act, actually doesn't allow either A, the Probation Act, or B, a suspended sentence. So, I mean, that could involve, uh, that could involve what they described as a disproportionate and draconian interference with their personal rights to a fair trial and is unconstitutional. They say that Section 6 of the Act uh, does not display the rational connection between the gravity of the offence and the requirements of justice. So that will be interesting as well, the outcome of that. We'll see what happens. They are challenging that, the constitutionality of the law, uh, which they claim is draconian in the High Court. Time to have the rest of the lunch now. <clears throat> Just watched the video there on YouTube, guy talking about Trump. The title of the video is Trump deteriorating in speeches and entire world is catching on. Your man is making the point that Trump has the intellect of a six year old and he is incapable of using words of more than one syllable, generally. And his speeches, if you actually commit them to, to writing, in other words, if you write them down, he says that journalists, the world, oh, jeez, oh, don't hit the car behind. Jesus, the mouse. He says that the journalists the world over have to basically interpret and rewrite, and journalists do this. They rewrite what Trump says, because if you actually just take Trump's words and put them on, uh, on paper, if you just commit them to writing, they actually make no sense whatsoever. So journalists have to actually rewrite them. But in this particular video, he's talking about Trump's intellect, having the intellect of a six-year-old and so on. And I fully agree with him. Trump has absolutely nothing to say. He's the most inarticulate, boorish leader that I have ever come across. But the sad thing is, the frightening thing is, he's leading in the polls in, in the United States in the presidential election. He's actually leading in the polls. And he has a significant lead over Biden. Now, it is possible that Biden will come back and it's possible that Biden's campaign will kick into gear and uh, he'll reduce the lead, reduce the gap and pass out Trump. But it's hard to see it just at the moment. I suppose what way the trial or various trials might go. But the significant thing is now it seems to be the case that there'll be no trials apart from this current one uh, because there simply won't be time for the other criminal trials to go ahead before the November election. So, you know, it's a scary time. It's a scary time, but I mean, I would challenge anybody, as the guy in the video has suggested there, to actually take Trump's 
speeches, write them down, take Trump out of the equation, write his speeches down of what he has to say, his so-called press conferences outside the court uh, in the Stormy Daniels, which money thing, and uh, see what sort of sense they make, because they make absolutely no sense whatsoever. And this man is going to be, as things stand at the moment, certainly from the polls, going to be the most influential, powerful, single person in the entire world and it is a scary scary prospect and uh, i'm keeping a close eye on the election or the trump situation and the prospective uh, election in the united states in november i'm keeping an eye on the polls and the various uh, legal uh, cases that trump has to face and so on but the bottom line is that the only case he would probably face is this one to do with the alleged attempt to basically uh, corrupt the outcome of the last election which is linked in with this Stormy Daniels this porn payment case but the more significant uh, criminal element of it is not actually paying the porn person porn star the more significant element of it is and the crime is basically trying to uh, unlawfully influence or determine the outcome of uh, an election. The um, it is frightening, and it's frightening to think that you know the guy is still leading in the polls. But it's a, there's a good while to go between now and November, and uh, there is um, there's time to turn around. But it's a frightening, scary prospect. Some work going on here. A cleaning up job do, being done. This guy, Art, yeah, Arthur. Anyway, if you hit the uh, hit the like button down there, you might subscribe as well if you like the video. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your support.